Welcome back to the Sorry Girls, the place where we DIY and design while keeping sustainability in mind. And today, I'm gonna take an Ikea dresser and make it a must-have item for any walk-in closet bedroom conversion. Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey, and today I'm actually at my sister's place because in her bedroom, she wants to try to create something that I think we can all relate to, a walk-in closet when it doesn't exist. <laughs> this girl will not stop sending me renders of like different rooms in her home that she wants to make over and upgrade, which gets me excited. But one item in this particular render that she drew up got me really intrigued. And I thought I'd come over and help out. Oh, and thank you to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. Jenna. Hey Kelsey. Tell me what you need in this room. This bedroom is great. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I wish I had was a space that was very obviously a closet. Yeah. Separated or like having some division from what is the bed. Right. And so I just want to find some division there. Are you trying to DIY a walk-in closet in a room Basically, that yeah. has a, a no. pretty decent size. It is a good closet. Wall closet. It was a top feature. But yeah, like a little like dressing room area. Mm -hmm. So the bed is its own calm space, and mm -hmm. then the closet is, you know, where you get ready in the day. So when Jenna first sent me a render of the bedroom, she had this like wardrobe here to to divide off the space. But I was like, if I may be a little big, bulky, I feel like for it to actually look good in the space, it would have to be floor to ceiling, like a built-in mm -hmm. proper divider, not just like I put an Ikea wardrobe like in the middle yeah. of the room. <laughs> that was the vibe. Um, and then you came back with, I think, what was really a good idea. Yeah, I basically put a shelving unit on top of a dresser mm -hmm. so that you're getting that storage, um, the clothing storage of a dresser unit, mm -hmm. as well as that partition element of having something that's to the ceiling yeah. um, and creating that kind of separation between the two rooms. Okay, well, I have volunteered to make you a dresser divider situation. But the plot twist is, I'm wondering if while I do that and make that for you, do you want to work on the rest of the makeover? Because you've already designed it and I know it's something <laughs> you want to work on. I definitely can do that. I think having the deadline will help me do it. Yeah. I'm supposed to put this off for months and months. Yeah. I'm excited to see it. So Jenna actually didn't want to keep this dresser. She wanted to get a new one, but this is the Tarva dresser from Ikea. It's very DIYable and I didn't want to get rid of it for no good reason. So I'm going to take another spin around the DIY clock with this dresser. I don't know what that reference was, but it was a reference. So I'm taking off all of the timbre because it's kind of falling off anyways and would have needed to be secured. I'm also taking some measurements and trying to figure out an idea. I know that in order to make this a divider, because I wanna do something similar to her rendering, I'm gonna to need to add like a shelf structure on top of it. I just need to figure out the best way to do that. Also, the back piece looks like a back piece, and since this dresser is going to be in the middle of the room as a divider, I'm going to need to figure out a new solution for the back. Even if it's a similar piece, but it just fits a little bit better. Okay, I think I have my list of things from the hardware store, but of course I always check our storage room first to see what we already have. Okay, we already knew this, but wood is so expensive. It's definitely a little heartbreaking, but I did find some pieces that were kind of affordable. Also, does this piece of wood look straight to you? First thing I know I wanna do is cut down the legs, just to change up the look a little bit and make it lower to the floor, which is cute, but okay, this is a little wobbly. Don't worry about that though, I will fix that with a new back piece. I do not like this edge, so goodbye edge. And I wanna make the whole thing as tall as Jenna's ceiling. So 
the height of the ceilings minus the height of the new dresser is how tall I will need to make my two inch by two inch poles. I bought four that were 72 inches long and I'm actually cutting these to 66 inches. I will also need to cut some shelves and for this I got 16 inch by one inch pine shelving and I'm cutting it to the exact same size as the top of the dresser, which is 29.5 inches long. And I'm gonna make four of these. Luckily, I did not need to cut the width because the true size of this piece is actually 15 inches and one quarter, which is exactly the size of the top of the dresser. Is that thread up? Oh my god, I've been waiting. I have nothing to wear tomorrow. There you go. Yes. There's a pair of sunglasses in here. I need stuff. I lost mine. Is this a good option? Okay, let's get back to So three years ago, I decided that I would only shop secondhand. I was just gonna give it a try to see how it went. And I really loved it. It was actually so much easier than I thought. But one of the things about shopping at in-person thrift stores is that you can't really like decide what you're going for. You can try to find something, but you might not find it. ThreadUp is an online thrift store where you can search for your size, brand, and any specific items, which is really exciting if you're Somebody like me who likes to thrift a lot, but also wants to find specific items. I'm also really excited to share a thread up with my sister because she has said it's really frustrating shopping secondhand because she can't always find her size. And on thread up, she was able to just select her size and only see items that were available in her size that would fit her. Okay, so let's build an outfit. I have two pant options here. They're both from thread up. This is just like a paper bag waist. Wide legs, super comfortable. But these are the brand On Demand, and they estimate to retail for $518. <laughs> but I got them for $81, which is a savings of $437. I mean, I think these have to be the star of the show today. This is cute. Okay, next up. I guess I'm feeling blue today. Not actually, I'm feeling happy. This Zara shirt is estimated to retail for $50. I got it on ThreadUp for $22.99, while this was on ThreadUp for $15.99. Let's go halter. I have some sunglass options. These are a little intense. I love them, but not for today. These are an airy option from ThreadUp. Simple. If you guys head to ThreadUp, you can sustainably shop this look, I'm probably gonna pair it with some of my white booties since these are kind of like long pants. And if you want 30% off of your first order and free shipping, use our code SORRYGIRLS to snag that. Okay, I gotta go to work. Cause I need to finish Jenna's wardrobe and bring her, her new wardrobe. She get double wardrobes. Okay, so we're starting off the day by taking our shelf pieces and cutting out the corners so that they can fit nicely within our four posts. I'm tracing the posts onto the corner and then using a jigsaw to cut out that corner of each shelf piece. Then we have to sand everything down, posts and shelves and the drawer fronts because I'm going to re-stain them a different color. And I'm in a cutting mood, so I am actually cutting a new back piece by tracing the original creased and cornerless back piece onto a new piece of quarter inch MDF, which we actually just had at the office. I literally do not know where some of this stuff comes from sometimes. For that back piece, I am wood gluing and nail gunning it to the back of the dresser. And when you do this, just make sure everything is square because this back piece is really important for the stability. Back to our posts. So I have clamped them together so that when I drill the holes where our shelves will be attached, I'm doing it exactly in the same spot on each pole so that our shelves are level. Since the posts are 66 inches and I have four shelves, or at least three shelves plus a little top piece, I'm marking 16.5 inches all the way up. 
and I'll explain later what we'll do for that very top shelf piece because it's a little bit different. Then I'm marking the middle of each individual piece so that I know where to drill, which is our next step. This is a countersink bit. So instead of drilling a pilot hole for your screw and then swapping out for a larger drill bit size in order to drill a larger hole partway through in order to countersink a screw head, this little bit just does it all in one. It saves so much time and it also saves time if there's two of you. <laughs> Um, okay, so the power has gone out because there is a huge storm rolling through, but I do have this little battery operated plug which will hopefully keep at least one light going for a little bit so that I can keep working. So now we are drilling pilot holes on our shelves, not to be confused with a countersunk pilot hole. This is a regular pilot hole and I'm doing this on each corner that we cut out and you only need to do it on one side of the corner. So I'm doing it on what would be the short end of the shelf and I'm just making sure to stay consistent. I'm doing this for three out of the four shelves and I'm also staining three of those shelves plus the drawer fronts. I already primed everything and it's time to give the posts and the dresser base a coat of paint. Everything that isn't painted is basically stained and everything that is not stained is painted the same tan color. But the green is like the right green. And I could in theory still use the green mat too. Yeah. These for your backyard? Yes. I think I do. They're kind of cool. I think we're gonna need a cart. We're gonna need a cart. They're cool. I don't I would love these. They're so are you weird. <laughs> Go off this. All my hopes and dreams in it. <laughs> it's a little small, isn't it? Okay, see your real day. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take back my booster cables. <laughs> Ta ta! Ta ta! I'm back and today we're going to finish this and go show Jenna. So now that all of our cutting and painting has been done, it's just kind of time to assemble. It's just kind of the easiest part. So I, did I just jinx it? Next up, I am drilling some two and a half inch screws into the posts where we created those counter sunk holes. I'm going just far enough that the little end pokes out a little bit and then I line it up with our pre-drilled holes on our shelves and it will all come together. I hope you guys are getting the vision right about now. So it's time to fill you in on that last shelf that we cut out. So this one I painted in order to look cohesive as the frame of the whole unit. And in order to attach it, I'm putting it in position which is level with the top of my posts. And then I'm using a nail on an angle to hold it into place. This won't really be holding any weight, so it doesn't need a screw, but I will drill through this piece to attach the whole unit to the ceiling so that it's secure. And of course, we want to wood fill and paint our countersunk screws so that the posts look smooth. Jenna said that these drawers didn't really slide in and out very nicely, so I tightened up some of the drawer tracks and I'm adding a large handle, which I think will help pull the drawer out straight and even and reduce any friction. These black handles will match some of the black accents that I know she's going for in her room. Which, speaking of, it is time to go to Jenna's. So Jenna definitely held up her end of the bargain. Her room is looking so good. So I'm really hoping that this dresser install goes according to plan. And step one is to get the bottom portion of the dresser into position. Step two is putting the shelving unit on top. And step three is attaching the shelving unit to the dresser with some screws from the inside of the dresser. Oh, you missed. How did 
did he not see that? Because I was over here making sure that I was lined up on this side. <laughs> my hand goes there. And finally, step four is attaching to the ceiling so that it's secure in place. Oh my god, I almost forgot about step five. Final touches. Think? Are you happy? I'm so happy. It really like separated the space, and gave me like that walk-in closet feel without having a walk-in closet. I didn't even pay her to say that or <laughs> tell her to say that. That was just genuine. <laughs> um, and if you guys want to shop my look from earlier, make sure you click the link in the description down below. Use code SORRYGIRLS and you're going to get 30% off plus free shipping. Oh, so you have more new thread of clothes. I do. I'm so excited. I really needed to overhaul my wardrobe. I was running out of clothes. Win-win. <laughs> See you next time. Oh, and if you guys want another kind of like closet makeover, this was like a closet hack, but if you want a full closet makeover, check out the video that Becky and I did for Nikki DiMartino. It was a good one. So we have to figure out a new plan, basically. Yeah. Something that mashes both of our styles together. There's no way she's not gonna love it. Right? Live, laugh, learn to cut brick. Faux brick. Welcome to your new walk-in closet in three, two, one. Don't cry, Nikki. Don't cry, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs>